In the course of examining film and video images of Columbia's ascent, the Intercenter Photo Working Group identified, on the day after launch, a large debris strike to the leading edge of Columbia's left wing. All right, I know you guys are looking at that debris. Yeah, um, as everybody knows, you know, we took the hit on the somewhere on the left wing leading edge, and um, and the Photo TV guys have completed, I think, pretty much their work. Although I know, I'm sure they're still reviewing their stuff, and they've given us. You know, approximate size for the debris and approximate area for where it came from and approximately where it hit. Um, so we are, you know, talking about doing some sort of parametric type analysis. Um, and also we're talking about looking at what you can do um, in the event we really, you know, we have some damage there. And really, I don't think there's much we can do. So, you know, it's not really a factor during the flight because there's there ain't much we can do about it. But... What I'm really interested in is making sure our flight rationale two flights ago was good. And maybe this is home from a different area, I'm not sure, and it may not be that can't maybe correlated, but you can try, see what we have. Okay. While the debris strike was well outside the activities covered by normal mission flight rules, mission management team members and shuttle program managers did not treat the debris strike as an issue that required operational action by mission control. Program managers, from Ron Didamore to individual mission management team members, had, over the course of the space shuttle program, gradually become inured to external tank foam losses, and on a fundamental level did not believe foam striking the vehicle posed a critical threat to the orbiter. In particular, shuttle managers exhibited a belief that RCC panels are impervious to foam impacts. Even after seeing the video of Columbia's debris impact, learning estimates of the size and location of the strike, and noting that a foam strike with sufficient kinetic energy could cause thermal protection system damage, management's level of concern did not change. Management decisions made during Columbia's final flight reflect missed opportunities, blocked or ineffective communications channels, flawed analysis, and ineffective leadership. Perhaps most striking is the fact that management, including shuttle program, mission management team, mission evaluation room, and flight director and mission control, displayed no interest in understanding a problem and its implications. Because managers failed to avail themselves of the wide range of expertise and opinion necessary to achieve the best answer to the debris strike question, was this a safety of flight concern, some space shuttle program managers failed to fulfill the implicit contract to do whatever is possible to ensure the safety of the crew. In fact, their management techniques unknowingly imposed barriers that kept at bay both engineering concerns and dissenting views, and ultimately helped create blind spots that prevented them from seeing the danger the foam strike posed.